Thank you so much for, for this invitation. I, I really want to thank uh, the Center for China and Globalization and the Dialogue of Civilizations Research Institute uh, for this uh, very good call. As we have heard from previous uh, speakers, um, if any, this uh, global pandemic, this global problem we have in terms of the health systems, in terms of the impact on lives, in terms of the impacts on livelihoods, in terms of the impact of the economy require a global response. But it also felt at the moment where, where multilateralism is called into question, where the first uh, uh, reaction by leaders in many countries is just to look inward and not to go outward for solutions that we know only the international system can provide. And therefore this discussion is very important because we have now a possibility of, uh, of looking first of how this, this global problem happened and how do we solve it uh, through international cooperation or how are we going to rebuild a, a world and look for solutions that are only answering the national considerations and this will be suboptimal. And we should not forget that even in the context of this pandemic, we really need to uh, strive and continue with the effort to address the global challenges as identified by the United Nations as identified by the SDGs, as identified by the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, because it's also true that uh, we knew that a uh, pandemic happens, big uh, problems on health issues happen, they know no frontier, and we were not really well prepared. I think this is one of the lessons, and this is something that we need to, to bring to the table to come back together. So, um, and COVID is also a tragic reminder of what is really uh, uh, important for, for, for us as human beings, the good physical and mental health, the environmental context, the social connections, education, and, and this health crisis made us revalue our priorities and, and to, to, to really find out what we treasure the most. Um, the health impact have been terrible, and we are with the thousands of people that have lost their lives or they have lost a family or a relative. The confinement measures that have to be taken because the health system were not prepared to cope with this pandemic have been also devastating. And as many of the speakers have mentioned, these measures come at the top of a situation that was already very fragile. It was fragile because of uh, the, the uh, protectionist uh, measures in international trade or international economy but also the results of a growth model that left so many people behind. Uh, at the OECD, we have been documenting for the last 10 years the increase in inequalities of income and opportunities, not only in, the, in developing countries and the most uh, uh, backward regions, but even in the most advanced economies. That had, this has been a trend, concentration at the top, deprivation at the bottom, and the COVID has also shown these vulnerabilities. Because when you have a crisis, what happens is you test the resilience and you test the, the strength of the systems as you have them. And, and we know that they have not been performing very well. And that includes the multilateral system. Uh, what happens is that the confinement measures had to be very tough uh, to allow for the health system to, to cope with the, with the problem. And what we see at the OECD is that because we don't have a vaccine, and we will need to live with the virus for the time to come until we find a cure or we find a medicine or a vaccine. The fact is that the impact on the economy is gonna be really important. Um, but, we, but there's lots of uncertainty because we don't know if there's gonna be a second wave. We are now seeing uh, some cases again in China and in Korea. We see countries like mine, Mexico or Brazil or the US really suffering and being the epicenter of the, of the pandemic now, but we're not free from it until we really have a vaccine. And therefore, in our latest economic outlook at the OECD, we had two scenarios. It's the very first time since the creation of the OECD that we have two scenarios because we don't have real certainty of what is going to prevail. One scenario assumes that we uh, control the pandemic, and the fall in the GDP, global GDP, is going to be around 
is already very, very high. Uh, but if there was to be a second wave in Europe and in the countries that have already controlled the, the pandemic, like China or, or Korea, the fall will be around 7.5%. And this is really, as I said, coming on top of high debt levels of the corporates, of high levels of inequality, of climate challenges, on the fact that uh, children, uh, women, and I, I commend the comment by uh, Mr. Raffaran on, on, the, on the women role on all these uh, 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 challenges, uh, but they are taking the hardest hit. Women represent 70% of the workforce and are not the best paid uh, workers in the health force. They take care of the long, long-term care uh, in our families of children, of, and then they also have less leverage. Uh, they are the weakest part of our societies. But the same with youth. So I would say that when we go back to look for answers, multilateral answers, we need to find people-centered responses. People-centered that respond to youth, that respond to children, the, the child that could not be connected, that cannot continue with their with their uh, schooling at home. Uh, these are the kind of answers that we need to bring for the multilateral system, because it's also true that as long as the people in the street uh, don't see what does it mean for them to have this fantastic multilateral system based on the United Nations, uh, is not going to get the support that we need when it takes uh, for the democratic processes that have brought us so many uh, populist leadership. Uh, so this is the kind of, of, of issues that we need to be uh, building up. We need to build again, uh, creating the jobs for the for the for people to to to, to live or to deliver in, in this situation. Um, so the real question here is how do we not only address the impact of the pandemic, but how do we rebuild? And as the Secretary General of the United Nations have said, and now we are all borrowing his words. Uh, how do we build back better? And there might be a, a silver lining, because if any, we discover the vulnerability as human beings, we discover the vulnerability as societies, and we also discover the vulnerability of our, our international infrastructure to deal with these issues. So I hope that the main message will be, again, that the only way is to go international, the only way is, go, is to go through cooperation, because it's, it's the only way in which we will be uh, at, at achieving the, the global solutions. Uh, first, because we need to learn from each other and, and, and we need to learn why some countries have managed much better than others. Of course, it's different. If you are very open to tourism, if you are very open to uh, international global value chains like France or like Italy, of course, the heat is going to be hardest. Uh, but the fact is also true that some health systems were better prepared. Uh, Germany has three times the average of uh, beds and, and uh, doctors uh, than the OECD, 39% uh, per 100,000 people. So they have the room, they're more resilient because resilience is another element that uh, was found lacking. Uh, how do we learn from the Korean experience of the, of the TPT strategy? Um, how do we learn from the many areas in which uh, all these countries have uh, really developed a, an effective uh, solution? But how do we also anticipate any future shocks and how do we build up from this experience to be better prepared? Second, because some of the issues can only be developed jointly, uh, we are now looking for the vaccine. Uh, the OECD has been saying for more than a decade that, that uh, there is not enough investment, international investment, uh, private investment in the production of vaccines. These investments are very expensive and the returns are not uh, so great. And therefore there is a market failure that should have been addressed. And therefore then there is this reconsideration. For many years, we have had this idea that governments and that the state should only intervene in the economy whenever there are market failures. But we see now that there are too many market failures that pose a real problem for societies. And therefore, the markets for vaccines, the market for, for uh, medicines should be revised. And as President Macron mentioned, uh, there are some global goods that cannot be left by the, to the markets alone. But this has to be done again through multilateral cooperation. How do we uh, uh, spur the R&D that is needed? 
how do we coordinate uh, on managing intellectual property rights, procurement access to uh, medical equipment. You, you, you saw all the things that happened during the pandemic. And then third, because uh, we need international cooperation uh, after, after uh, countries come up with a huge debt, after all the fiscal efforts that they have to put together to uh, keep the economy going, uh, we will need to rethink and look for innovative ways uh, to deal with the recovery. If we are going to be uh, just trying to cope with the debt levels, the recovery will be very slow, and then you will need you would not have the growth rates that you need actually to uh, overcome the debt uh, problem. And that's why at the OECD we are continuing to build up the international tax infrastructure with an inclusive framework and to, uh, to consider the question of digital tax because uh, tax evasion and tax erosion is something that we need to deal with if we want uh, a strong governments, a strong government system. And so um, if you think about trade, it's also only multilateral. We are now seeing this backlash against the supply chains that were built in the just in time and people are saying, well, now we need the just in case. We need to build buffers. We cannot be highly dependent on uh, certain uh, products in certain countries. But at the same time, you cannot just go back and, and try to be self-sufficient because that's not going to happen without causing huge harm to the, to the international system. So this is, this is uh, very important. So we need to turn this crisis into an opportunity to enhance multilateral cooperation. The post-COVID world that we envision is a new growth narrative that is people-centered. Of course, the SDGs already provide this uh, guide, guidance to us. It's multi, multidimensional. It has uh, very concrete elements on how to look at sustainability, inclusiveness, efficiency, without giving primacy to just a single objective, as we have done with the efficiency. And building back better means greener, but also enhance inclusiveness and resilience. It means not forgetting those at the bottom, don't forgetting the developing and the low-income countries that are still suffering. Uh, we need to keep the commitments on ODA. We need to keep the commitments on financing. It's important that we keep the solidarity that has been built in the system for many years to, uh, to ensure that we have better outcomes. And against this background, a stop UN must rise to these challenges. Uh, the fact that those same nine, nine, 193 countries came together in 2015, only five years ago, to agree on the 2030 Agenda and its 17 SDG goals, is an example of the huge potential that, that this uh, organization has. We are supportive. The, the, the Secretary General in, in the OECD always says that uh, uh, we are support cast as if we are in Hollywood movies, because the United Nations is the center of the multilateral cooperation and we should all support it. So I, I hope that we will continue uh, uh, pushing for this idea that multilateralism is the only way. I hope that we will be able to show those leaders that today are refusing or turning their back to multilateralism that is very costly to do so. And I hope that all of us that believe that through international cooperation, we can achieve better outcomes, will stick together. And that's why I'm very glad to join you today. Thank you very much.